What's up guys, it's Nick here and today I'm going to be talking about how you can get the most dynamic range out of your camera in photo and video mode. So some of you might be asking, what is dynamic range? Well, dynamic range is essentially how well your camera can expose for the highlights and the shadows of a shot. The more dynamic range you have, the more stops, as they say. Uh, the better it'll do in harsh lighting conditions. One reason cinema cameras, like, you know, Red Weapons, Air Alexas, you know, things like that, they cost so much. One reason is because they have extremely high stops dynamic range. And with them extremely high stops dynamic range, they can produce a really natural, cinematic looking image. If you're using a lower end camera like the one I'm shooting on now, or even like an ADD or something like that, they don't have really extremely high stops dynamic range. They're not built for cinematic, movie quality work. But how do you get the most dynamic range out of a camera like that because you want to kind of to produce an image similar. For a video, I definitely recommend you shoot as flat as possible. And this footage here, I actually shot it in a flat picture profile. Now, this camera doesn't come with one built in from the manufacturer. Like Canon cameras, uh, higher end ones will come with something called C Log, which is basically a flat profile built in by Canon. This camera doesn't have it, so I just had to pack my own little profile. I made a whole video talking about that a little bit ago. I'll link in a little end card at the end of the video. Most camera companies' predetermined picture profiles have a lot of contrast in them. They crush the black, so it kind of, it degrades the quality and doesn't have the best dynamic range. But with shooting flat, it opens up the contrast. You know, that's why it's called flat, because the image looks really flat at first, you know, there's no contrast, no saturation. And you can add that in post-production. And in the end, it'll just make your footage look a lot more cinematic. So how I like to color grade my footage, in the beginning, when I first started doing this, I would take an image of this scene with the predetermined picture profile the camera chooses. And then when I get it back in post-production, I would take the actual footage, which I shot in log, I would color grade it similar to that image I took. Now, I didn't put the contrast as high up because I feel like they do overdo the contrast in blacks. I do it slightly flatter than what the camera predetermines and I would do a little bit more saturation. But when color grading, it's just a lot of personal preference how you want your image to look and you can really manipulate that in post-production. So now we're gonna be talking about photography. With photography, you're gonna be able to shoot raw and some super high-end cinema cameras like the Reds, they can shoot in raw video, but I mean, this is for photography, so I'm gonna talk about raw photos. So essentially, a raw photo is basically untouched. It's not, it doesn't have any information burned into it. So a standard JPEG image, for example, this image on screen, now you can see it's really whited out. If I try to bring that back, like, you know, recover that image, I can't because them white overexposed pixels in that JPEG are burnt into it. Now that same image, raw, I can really do a lot more. I can bring back most of that image and make it look pretty decent. And with raw, you can bring back things like shadows and stuff to an extent obviously and not lose any quality. Alright, so we're gonna jump into photos. That's what I use to edit my raw photos. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually kind of improve the dynamic range of the photo. Okay, let's go. And here we are in photos. This is right here. This is the raw photos. As you can see, it's a little dark in this section here. But what you can do is you can click on edit because photos can't edit raw photos. You can tell it's raw because it says raw up there. And I usually go to adjust because that's where everything is. What I like to do is I like to kind of tweak everything. So as you can see here, the sky that's perfectly exposed. I like to bring up them shadows, not too much because then the whole image becomes a little brighter, but bring them up so you can see the road, drop them highlights just a tad bit just because that sky is starting to peek in a little too much, uh, a tad, minus 60, kind of drop the exposure slightly, boost the shadows up, kind of brighten it slightly, as you guys can see, just brighten it a little bit. Uh, kind of, I like to kind of increase the contrast a little bit whenever I do this, kind of drop the blacks, not too much so you guys see it starts to look too flat. I kind of drop the blacks a little bit. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now I go out on here and I kind of adjust my own. I kind of, I kind of do this. See what I like. I'm, a, I, I'm gonna put this one about here. I'm gonna make it slightly. Uh, I'll do a little warmer. So I, I kind of like the warm look. I'm gonna boost them shadows just a tad bit. Drop the highlights a bit. But I kind of want to keep the highlights. You can see if I were to put this back, now it's way too bright. I'm gonna drop the highlights of the sky. Drop the exposure, but maybe I can boost the height. There we go. It's just a lot of fine tweaking. As you can see, this is the final image. If I revert back to original, you can see that's what it looks like in original. Put these enhancements back on. That's what it looks like. A lot better and a lot more flexibility when you shoot raw. And I can kind of bring back that exposure a little bit. I can kind of boost the highlights. Just kind of make them lights pop a little bit more. I can kind of drop. I can kind of boost the shadows a little bit. And this is just showing why shooting raw is a lot better. I just have so much more to work with in post. And again, it's a lot of fine tweaking on how you want to do it. This shot, I kind of do a little extra little saturation. Maybe put that contrast like that. Make kind of make like a cooler cast because it, this is a lot. This is a really blue photo. And there we go. That's that. If I do the same thing, white, and I do this back, boom. It looks a lot better. And there it is, guys. Just a little quick video talking about how you get the most dynamic range out of your camera and photos and videos. Just as I said, quick, simple, 
pretty easy to do. So thank you all for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.